ahead and call this meeting of the Pittsburgh City Commission in order. Uh, Commissioner Mernan will not be joining us this evening. But join me in the invocation given by Ada Hutchinson, or Hutchcraft, excuse me, from Via Christian. Let us pray. Our gracious God, you are Lord over the whole earth, and you give grace to the great and to those who are weak. And we are all in need of your strength and grace. Let us recognize how you have placed each one of us where we are for a specific purpose, greater than we can see or know in this present moment. We pray that your words, your will, your purpose would be accomplished as we gather together for our agendas, may your agenda be the one that is done. And may we find great satisfaction in doing your good work here where we live. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Uh, we'll open the floor for any public input. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move to the consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed this evening? Not to have a. I'll move to approve. Second. Moved and approved, or seconded. Uh, roll call vote, please. Gray? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ketterman? Aye. Munza? Aye. Okay. Consider the following. FAA grant agreement for the mill and overlay of runway 1634. Consider staff request to accept a grant in the amount of $944,049 from the Federal Aviation Administration for the mill and overlay and restriping of runway 1634 taxiway turnaround and other connecting pavement surfaces. Cameron? Hi, uh, Cameron Alden, Public Works Director. Uh, thank you, Mary Commissioners. Uh, what you have before you, I was hoping to be a little bit more, so I'd ask you for the million dollar question. Unfortunately, it's only $944,000 question. Um, this is the FAA's 90% uh, match for the construction and the construction engineering of the uh, uh, mill, or mill and overlay of the main runway there, the 1634. Uh, with this, uh, was it, uh, the work would start to this year and would be done this year. That's our number one priority with the airport out there. And what we're looking at, trying, trying, Uh, essentially what will happen is we'll have the main runway closed down for 45 days while they're doing the mill and overlay and then the, they'll come in mill the north end and then uh, they'll close the cross wind runway mill and pave back that portion there open the cross wind runway back up and then uh, finish paving out on the north side so what's before you is entering into the agreement with the FAA, so they will pay the 90%, and the cities uh, would be a 10% uh, match on that. So a little over $100,000 would be the city's match. But it will be coming up uh, before you right now, just for your information, is we're also, we'll be uh, bringing later a uh, agreement uh, and bids for the extension of the runway. That would be down here. We would look at extending the existing runway 600 feet, so I didn't want anyone to get confused, but that will be coming up later on. But this work is uh, for mill and overlay uh, for this year. Is that ex extension of the runway, is that something that will come up this year? 
Yes, uh, uh, funding wise it will, construction wise, depending on the timing of things, it might start at the end of this year or it might uh, start in 2017. So is this seen as kind of a necessary first step for like the extension part or? Uh, how this came about was initially what we were looking at with the uh, FAA was to do an extension that had been uh, one of the top priority projects uh, of the airport and the airport users. However, the FAA started changing their scoring of the, if you will, of the different uh, uh, projects. And so maintaining what you already have scored higher than doing an extension. And so for us to be able to get dollars, they would not have funded an extension this year initially. And so we switched horses. We'd already started the design on the extension, flipped over, did the mill and overlay. It was needed, but it wasn't as high priority to the users as an extension was. Um, we got that process off and going, got that designed. And at the very end of last year in December, FAA came to us and said that they had uh, folks that were not going to be able to do their projects in this fiscal year. And would we be willing to go ahead and move forward with the extension since we'd already laid the groundwork they knew it was a priority for our airport. And so since there were dollars available, they could reassign those dollars to Pittsburgh. It's not 100% sure, but I'd say it's about 95% sure that we'll get those dollars. That extension project is estimated about 1.7 million. So we'd get about a little better than 1.5 from the FAA for that project as well. And again, that's what we'll be looking at bringing to you at a later date. Cameron, when was the last time this section was milled and overlaid? And I believe. 1998. So once you do it again, it should last for quite a while. Or right. Uh, typically on uh, asphalt pavements, you expect about 15 years of wearing life on the surface. So we've got a little better than that on it right now. And where does the remaining 10, you said it was 90-10? Right. The 10% from the city then? is general fund or how does that work I'm uh -huh. guessing I believe it is it's yeah. there's no other questions I'll move to approve a second moved and seconded all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries <coughs> Ordinance G-1254. Consider ordinance number G-1254, repealing ordinance G-1172, and establishing minimum landscaping standards in the commercial zoning districts and residential districts created by section, did I have to read all those? <laughs> section 40-101, 40-102, 40-103, Forty dash one hundred three, forty dash one hundred four, forty dash one hundred five, forty dash one hundred six, forty dash one hundred seven, forty dash one hundred eight, forty dash one hundred nine, forty dash one hundred ten, and forty dash one hundred eleven. To zoning ordinance number G six sixty three. Troy, Mayor and Commission, I promise the next one won't be as long. Um, the zoning, Planning and Zoning Commission kind of put me to task at the beginning of the year um, to look at updating some of our zoning regulations. Um, we have, uh, it's come about to us through different developments that have come to town that there's some of the items that we need to update so, so we can, you know, meet and stay ahead of what some of the items we're seeing. Um, as part of this, uh, we had a landscaping ordinance that was in place um, that would basically require certain landscaping um, in commercial areas. And what we've done is we've extended this to include our uh, plan medium density, which is our RP3, and our also our RP4, which is our apartment building. And what we're doing is we're trying to, um, we want to make sure that when someone comes in and they're looking at developing a large tract of land like that, that we're not just trying to shoehorn as many apartments as we can on a, on a property. We want to make sure that there's a little bit of mixture of green space and landscaping as well so it remains attractive um, to the areas around it. So. In doing so, we, like I said, we included um, the RP3 and RP4, which is our higher density uh, residential districts as well. So it would be anything, any new, new development or anything new that comes to town. So. 
Would it impact existing ones as no, well then? No, it wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, they would be grandfathered yeah, in. Just, yeah, everything that's existing, so. Questions? If there's none, I'll move to approve. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, ordinance number G-1255. Consider ordinance number G-1255 amending section 25101 of the city of Pittsburgh zoning ordinance number uh, G-663 to reduce the number of parking spaces required for buildings and structures used for certain categories or uses and increase the number of parking spaces required in certain residential districts. Um, uh, once again, um, I'd like to say the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, put me to task to do some research on some of our parking uh, in our in our planning or zoning ordinance. Um, what they've done, they've made changes um, to if you what's in front of you there, we've made changes to the apartments that are three or more units um, before it was, it was required one per unit, but what we found is um, someone would come in and technically a unit might include three or four beds. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't have uh, parking being pushed out of the complex onto city streets and, and you know, kind of crowd in the area anymore. So what we've done, uh, the, after doing research in other similar cities, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, came forward and said that they would like to see uh, the apartments, which are three or more units, one parking space per bedroom, and then have additional spaces for um, should there be visitors to the complex, basically. So every eight additional units, you've got um, a space for a visitor to park. Um, the other change we made was in our, res um, our retail establishments. Um, currently, before, we would require one space per 250 square feet of, or excuse me, 150 square feet of, of what the retail establishment was. Um, once again, when doing some research, we found that we were creating um, a lot of, you know, basically asphalt jungles where we've got parking that, that we've got way more than what we needed for that retail space so what we've done we've we've lessened that kind of alleviate what's required and then in turn that allow them to you know do more green spaces allow bike parking allow walking trails walking spaces as well so we increased what was required for some of our higher density residential and then we decreased um, some that was required for our retail so and this again just impacts new development. Yeah, correct. Not? Yeah. Move to approve. I second it. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. Any non agenda reports or requests? Just two. Uh, they'll go quick. Kim, you want to get us going? <clears throat> Mayor, Commissioners, it is that time of year um, when I come to you with the 4th of July fireworks contract. I apologize that it wasn't put on the agenda, but we wait until the last minute to see what donations come in and then try to sign that contract in time to get it back to Jane and Displays, who has shot our show for several years. We have achieved a goal of $20,000 um, with fundraising. A big portion of that um, began with Big Bang Rock Fest, just under 7,000 coming in from that, and then Kansas Crossing pledged another 10,000 again this year. And then we've had some other great um, large donations come in on top of that. So we have raised the $20,000 that we normally pay out for, for the fireworks. Um, also, on top of that, it's not just a $20,000 show. Um, as they did back when they sold us the fireworks before they sold to J&M, Jake's will also throw in $5,000 worth of fireworks on top of that, um, just as they did in the past. And then um, we are getting just about $3,500 donated from J&M. So it'll be about a $28,000 show once it's, once it's put up. So um, just come to you with that and ask permission to sign that contract. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Been moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Gary's. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, Kim. That's more than we had last year. Okay. I think that's one firework per resident. All right, Jay. This last one. All right. Um, for about 
Uh, for over 20 years, the Joplin Regional Business Journal has provided a um, recognition of uh, women of, of influence in our region, and we are fortunate this year to have uh, had one of our own uh, recognized as a most influential woman. Um, Becky Gray, this was, uh, was there. I was lucky to be at the, uh, at the ceremony last Thursday. It was quite a nice ceremony. Great, great group of women who received that award. A lot of inspiring comments were made during as well, uh, but we did like we would like to formally recognize Becky's uh, position as a most influential woman, and uh, we did uh, we were able to uh, give her this kind of recognition from the Business Journal, right? Along and they gave a very nice uh, uh, award. For, for that. Wanted to give this to her and formally recognize her position. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. A little speech, so thank you all very much. I didn't expect this tonight. I was um, doing background checks in my office, and Jay said, "Hey, come prepared to do this thing." So um, I'm taken a little bit aback, but I appreciate the opportunity to to receive this award, and I just I hope that I can continue to um, serve this community in some kind of positive capacity. So thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. We are fortunate. Um, we have a great executive team. Luckily, we have some um, some pretty good men on our executive team, and apparently some exceptional women because they keep winning awards. So the men, the bar is raised, and we will continue to try to keep up with the women on our executive team. But um, everybody's doing a great job, and one thing we don't do very well is acknowledge when we do something good. And uh, we thought this was a good opportunity with a short meeting to make sure that you guys know that um, we do have exceptional people working for the city, and appreciate them being recognized by. Um, other cities in some cases like Joplin. That's all we got, Mayor. Well deserved. Uh, is there anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.